Good morning, Chameleon Wranglers. Welcome to day two. Well, the first thing we're going to have to do is select the proper cage. Now we need to be smart about this because the cage has to provide the conditions we need for the type of bioactive we want to create. I know when you think of bioactive, you probably think about a dart frog vivarium and like the forest floor of a tropical rainforest. Well, there are arid bioactive environments as well. Our chameleons, though, would do well with the same type of tropical rainforest type bioactive. And we're looking for humidities around, say, around 50% during the day and 80 to 100% at night. And luckily, the most commonly available isopods and springtails will fit that just fine. So, what kind of cage do we need to provide those conditions? And that, of course, depends upon your ambient conditions. Mostly the people in the northern latitudes like United States, Europe, Canada, we're probably going to be needing to use a hybrid cage that has solid sides, maybe even a glass cage. But we need the ones that have vents in the front under the door and a screen top so we get that airflow. If you do live in an area where it has high humidity, then a cage with more screen may be appropriate because you don't want too much humidity within the system. Now, lucky for us, there are a number of cages out there that are designed specifically for this application. In this particular project, both Michael and I are using the cages from Leap. This is a relatively new company here in the reptile community, and it's headed up by Tim Marks, who has been deeply involved with chameleons for quite some time. And so you know these cages are optimized for what we need from them. Now, of course, you can see them in the background. Those are the Leap cages, and I'm gonna be going deep into the Leap cage in the next episode. But what you need to know right now is the important thing is that it does have the solid sides to hold in the humidity, and it's got some vents along the front so the cool air can be sucked in. And then the top is screen, and the lights up there are going to be heating the air, and so you know that warm air rises. And as the warm air rises through the top of the cage, it pulls the cool air through the vents under the door, and so you get what they call a chimney effect. You've heard that chameleons need ventilation, and this is true, but they don't need 100% ventilation. What they need is the right balance of humidity and air exchange. And the leap cages are one of the configurations that give us exactly this. Now, if you want to make it easy, you just go to the shopping list that I have on the Chameleon Academy website, and you can buy your leap cage, simple as that but it is valuable for you to understand the concepts and why the cage was selected. In case you have the opportunity to use another cage, you need to understand what's important about it. As the reptile community grows, more and more brands are gonna be trying to take a piece of the pie, so to speak. And we're gonna be getting companies that don't know or care about reptiles. They're just coming in as a business decision. And so the cages coming from them may not be optimized or appropriate for our purposes. So just be careful out there, especially if you're shopping on price. There's always a cheaper cage, but there isn't always a better cage. Now, also when you're selecting a cage, you need to be mindful of what chameleon you're going to be keeping in there and what size of cage you need. If we're talking about the standard veiled chameleon, panther chameleon, Jackson's chameleons, we're talking about cages that are about four feet tall. And if you're using the standard vertically orientated cage, you're going to have to make sure that the lighting on top is powerful enough to light the bottom so your plants down there can live. The cages and chameleons that Michael and I are designing for are smaller chameleons, like the carpet chameleons or baby chameleons. And so we're dealing with shorter cages. Michael is using an 18 inch tall cage. I used a 24 inch tall cage and I am building with a 36 inch cage. Whatever you do, you have to make sure that the cage is big enough, yet you will get enough light to the bottom. I hope to give you enough information here that you can make the decision that's right for you. In the next episode, I'm gonna give you a review of the Leap cages that I am using for this build. Subscribe to the Chameleon Academy to make sure you're getting all the episodes. And I will see you very soon.